Let's rewind and see how we did this. So we started with a really simple block. But we rate in one direction, then we rate in the second direction, and then we have a, a two-dimensional grid. We added the lattice modifier, and then we added the boolean to reduce the size of it. Now, if we go and play along with the lattice modifier, you will see that our object sort of adjusts to it, and it's almost like a wave. So now that we have our geometry, we want to present it in a nice manner. To do that, we're going to add a view and render it. The first step is to add a camera. So I already have a camera. I'm going to erase it. Let's add a new camera. Add camera. And by default, it puts it where the cursor is. So I'm just going to drag it out. So if we go with the camera selected in the sidebar in item, move the Z around and the X, there it is, that's the camera. So right now it's not the active camera because I do have other cameras, but they are hidden. To make it active, go to view, cameras, set active object as camera. So now it's the active camera. Next, in the sidebar, go to the view tab, view lock and lock camera to view. So now if we move around and pan with the middle mouse button, we're actually adjusting our camera. So let's find a nice view that we like and we want to increase the field of view for the camera. So go to the object data properties, focal length, and let's change that to 30 millimeters. That's a little bit nicer. These kinds of objects, they always look quite impressive from a lower angle view, looking up with a wide angle lens. So you can almost get like overwhelmed from the scale, from the size of it and from the sheer complexity. So let's play a little bit more. I think I want to go maybe in the other direction. I'm just going to select that person, click the accent key and view selected to reset our camera because sometimes it gets funny. Um, yeah, I think that may look a little nicer here. So we want to see a little bit of the top and kind of understand what the space is doing underneath. Okay, so I'm happy with this camera now and make sure to uncheck camera to view to make sure we remove the camera. And the other thing that we can do is we can lock the camera item. So click on the camera and if you uncheck this cursor, it disables in the selection. I'm going to move that in collection zero too. So now we can't click on the camera anymore. That view is locked. To get back to the camera view, we click this icon here, which is the camera view. And that's what it looks like. So next, let's go to material preview mode and start adjusting some settings. This view, we're only going to do it in material preview because the idea is to show you the quickest way to have something presentable. So let's go to the render settings. That's looking like the camera and enable ambient occlusion. Make sure you're in EV, by the way. Enable Bloom, enable Screen Space Reflections, and expand Shadows. Change Cube Size to 2048 and Cascade Size to 2048. Uncheck Soft Shadows. Next, let's expand Ambient Occlusion. Change the distance to something like 3. Maybe let's try 3.5 meters. And that gives that kind of artificial shadow that's still very nice. So we have our base settings done. Now let's play a little bit with the materials of our object. So first select the ground, go to the material properties, which is over here. Let's add a new material and change the base color to something a little bit darker. And let's make it more reflective by reducing the amount of roughness. Let's make it a little bit darker yet again and reduce the roughness a bit more. Next, let's add another material for our object on top. So select the pavilion, cl click a new material. If you want, you can name it. So let's name this pavilion. And I think we want that just painted white. So the default materials are fine. There's one aspect that I think would make this read a little bit better. And that is if we give the small supports a different material. So to do that, let's go into edit mode Enable X-Ray, deselect everything, so select none, and then hover your mouse over the small elements and press L. Now I'm in vertex selection mode and I'm in near vertex. If you're in a face selection mode, you can be near a face. Okay, so now they're selected. Let's add a new material. So in the material tab, in the properties menu, click the plus button to add a new material slot. Create a new material. Now let's call this material pavilion support. 
Next, we actually need to assign it to our selected geometry. So we need to press assign. Now it's assigned. To make sure that it works, let's give it a really funky color. Blue, that's fine. So now let's give it something a little bit more neutral. So I'm going to go back and maybe we have just like a black and white object. So now let's exit out of edit mode. So let's go back into object mode. Let's go and find our camera. And we can barely see them. I think I want to adjust my camera a little bit more. So let's enable the camera. And again in view. Within the camera. Lock camera to view. And now let's move around to see if we can find a nicer angle. This here works quite well. I'm just going to move our boolean around. And it's going to be ever so slightly. Okay. So now we have the view set up and we have our camera set up. So because we're in material preview mode, if we click on render, so let's try this out. Render, render image. You see, we're not getting something that looks good. In fact, we have a couple of issues, right? One is we can actually see our Boolean object. So we need to disable it at render time. If we close our render win window, select the Boolean object. And if you see, so make sure you have all these icons enabled. If you don't click on the filter and enable them as you see on my screen. So we need to have selectable, hide in viewport, disable in viewports and disable in renders. So once you have all those icons, make sure you click, you can check disable in renders. What that does is it makes sure that that object is not present when we render. So now let's try rendering again. So render, render image. Okay, it looks better, but kind of crap. So to make this image look a little bit better, we can do a couple of things. The simplest is to actually render directly from the viewport. So if you go to view, viewport render image, it captures exactly what we have in the viewport and it uses the settings of the camera and the resolution set forth. However, we see all the geometry that we may not necessarily want to see and the quality is a little bit low. The first thing we need to do is disable to show overlays. So, so near the view modes, if we click on this icon show overlays, it disables all of them. So now we only see the renderable geometry. Next, let's go to render settings and in here we have sampling. So for render, we have 64 and for the viewport 16. If you change the viewport to 64, it's going to have the exact same resolution in the viewport as we have during renders. So now if we go and click view, viewport render image, and we get a much nicer image. So within this image, we can also do some basic edits within Blender. Again, in the render settings, if you scroll all the way down, there's a sub tab called color management, which should be the last one. If you expand it, we have something called looks. So your view transform should be to filmic by default and for look, you have none. Now, if you change that to high contrast, you see it makes our darks darker and lights lighter. So that creates a nicer image for understanding our geometry. Now, if you're not happy with the high contrast, we can go to very high contrast and change that or to medium high contrast. We can also change the exposure of the overall image. So we can use that in tandem with high contrast and we can also adjust the gamma. So these are quite basic controls, but they can help us visualize exactly what we're dealing with without needing to post process in Affinity Photo or Photoshop. So once you're happy with the image, we can go to image, image safe. You get your window. So I'm going to call this image 03 and file format. So PNG is the preferred one, but if you need something that you can send over email, you should use JPEG or if you're rendering a lot of tests, you can also use JPEGs. Save as image. Now, if we exit out of here and let's say we're trying out a few different cameras and we want to do a lot of tests. We can change the resolution of our output image by clicking the second icon here, output. So we have resolution X, Y. So by default, Blender is set to HD quality. And I tend to leave that as is unless there's a very good reason to change that. Because if we're doing presentations, we can use full screen views. What we can do though is change the percentage. If we're doing previews, we can change it to 25. Or if we want something higher res, we change it to 150. So that's 1920 by 150. So it changes the overall scale of our element. It changes the overall scale. Again, let's go to view, 
viewport render image and it's going to take a little bit longer. I mean, it's still wavy, so it should be fairly quick and go to image, save as, and I'm going to save it as image 3 b Ah, you see what's happening right now? I forgot to uncheck the view lock camera, so I'm moving around my camera. So let me undo that. Thanks so much for watching. So if you like what you're seeing, smash that like button. Definitely helps the channel a lot so it can reach more people like you that are interested in architecture design with Blender.